mom and aunt told me that when I was young, I was really expressive towards things that I watch. I was always crying and crying out Chala's name, aka Cha Sung Joo in the Korean drama Survey to Heaven, that was the Galuk dubbed by GMA. I was also a fan of Dao Ming Su, and they told me that at a young age I was crushing on that man because he was the leader of F4 and that he's so handsome. And that enjoyment was passed when Korea adopted the manga Hanayori Danko and pioneered the Korean wave with its name Boys Over Flowers. As far as I remember, I despised Junpyo, <laughs> even though he's the leader of F4. That's basically the reason why I hated him. He's such a brat. Mm, I couldn't remember every classic Korean material that I was able to live by before, but I know for a fact that it all happened because my mom and aunt were both into it. I could recall though the first Korean song that ever struck my head and that was Nobody by Wonder Girls that until now I know the lyrics of and the dance steps clearly. Now this is where the journey starts I believe. One time I was randomly switching channels because I only knew about Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, Animax, and Nickelodeon, so I had to do a discovery for my benefit. On the highest channel number, there's this channel called Arirang, and the show Pops and Soul had just seemingly got back from a commercial break. They played multiple um, music videos of K-pop groups there, and the first one was FX's La Chata. Since it was foreign and there were no subtitles shown, I couldn't understand anything, but I was so sure that I was diving into it. I still remember listing their names when the music video started because there's this part of their names glowing on a signboard. That day, I even made a Yahoo account with the password of one of the members' names, and that's Crystal. From then on, I was so into them that I started learning a bit of Hangul by writing their names. And I was doing a lot related to these people that I just saw moments ago, but I was feeling it. I was enjoying it. I realized that the three minute video of them opened the door to everything that I love now. K-pop. FX got me into K-pop in 2009. For me, they were the prettiest, most balanced, and most talented out of all. I have their whole discography downloaded on my laptop using mp3 skull and a lot of their photos are saved as soon as SMR fancams upload content. And I was really happy with everything but it was actually different from when I was in school. I couldn't really open up about my subject interest because they might find it weird as per the classic stigma. But years after, newer groups got exposure and when EXO debuted, I got to talk about them with some of my elementary friends, Gia and Frances. I also want to dedicate this video to them because they made me feel like other people are also enjoying what I enjoy. And so many people were poked by curiosity. EXO was all over the place and several boys in school have baller bands of EXO members' names and numbers and a lot of people I know who said K-pop boys were gay and that K-pop music is noise jumped in the wave. K-pop favors enjoyment for all, after all. But it's not about it all the time. It was a devastating period in K-pop when Lady Scout members got into a major car accident leading to two out of five members dying. It was the first time I felt grief. The first time I got hurt by other people's death because I hadn't experienced losing a loved one then. I thought that it was so unfair that they died when I only just appreciated their song, I'm fine, thank you. This happening generated my fear of losing people. I didn't fear death, but losing. I know it wasn't fair of me, but I hated how losing someone kills a part of me. But yeah, since we cannot control time, surroundings, and even people themselves, 
losing will be as hurtful as it is every time it betides. I thought I was fixed with EXO as my ultimate group, but then so many things were happening between them, so they pretty much floated on a mad tide and I didn't really like that I was being affected over and over by lawsuits and members leaving, so I got to enjoy other groups to avoid being affected. In 2015, the group that I was highly anticipating finally debuted. I thought to myself that they're just one person greater than a population of EXO, so it'd be easy to really know them well and live with them throughout my Cape of Fan era, so now they're my ult. 17. Devastatingly, in the same year, my other favorite member, Sully, of my favorite group, FX, left, and I had a really hard time accepting it. But I soon realized that she decided it for her sake. Then, on an unexpected day in December of 2017, I remember I was dressed as bell for my university's Christmas event, and I just thought that everything was going well until I saw on my first ever Twitter account's timeline that Jonghyun passed away. My paleness behind my real thick makeup as well and my shattering heart response were all still vivid to me. I remember rushing home and just stalking his Instagram because he just posted recently and it was all so unbelievable to me. He was just there. Then, for a while, Sully followed him. I couldn't move for a whole day when the news of her passing came out. It felt like losing a biological sister. Just after a few days, my bias and Kara also passed away. It was too much for me and so depressing because they all died the same way and their death started to trigger me, so I took a break from K-pop for a month. I was slowly returning my way into all of it when I was hit that its absence just versus my miserable feeling. I observed how having K-pop in my regular day of life fulfills the wholeness of the day. I don't know what I'm saying now, but I just know that K-pop is a really huge part of me. Just days ago, a member of the group that I and my aunt sincerely love passed away. It was another frozen time for me. It was from the moment it happened hurt, and still is painful. Unbin was a smiley guy, just like the three angels I mentioned. They have the most beautiful smiles. It's just so hard to believe that he's also gone. I thought it'd be more difficult for me because I'm more vulnerable now, but from what I've observed, my coping mechanism is stronger than before. I developed emotionally that even though the moon reminds me of Moonbin, I smile when I look at it with only genuine thoughts in mind. Sigh. <laughs> I can't believe I said all of these without crying, but it's what I have to do. Live, and I guess what I also have to do is not hate on losing, but to do something to go against the many reasons why I lose. This is a call to entertainment companies to protect their artists more and more, and to people to check on their family and friends.